If you're a PC gamer that more or less follows the trends of technology and hardware and so on, you've probably noticed that 2018 has been a pretty weird year for us. In this video, I'm going to walk you through why I think this has been the weirdest year in PC hardware as long as I can remember. And I'm pretty old. Now with reason number one, the PC gaming community started off the year with a bang, with the great GPU shortage of 018. Is that something you can say? I don't know, of 18? The great GPU depression of all time. It was really weird, you couldn't find a graphics card anywhere, and if you could find one, it was for like three times the price of MSRP. And it's really weird because the graphics card scene kind of turned into American politics. Everybody was blaming everybody for why graphics cards cost so much, and then everybody kind of, for some reason, ganged up against the Chinese didn't really make any sense. Anyway, I don't remember any time in history when it was that difficult and expensive to find a graphics card. If you can remember a time like that, do let me know in the comments section below. Now reason number two for why I think this has been the weirdest year in PC gaming is because of the whole Intel versus AMD thing. Now, I know that it doesn't on the surface seem as though it's been any weirder this year than it's ever been in the past, but let me walk you through my thinking. Now, in 2017, AMD launched the Ryzen CPUs, which really brought the fight back to Intel with you know many cores and a cheap CPU, and it really challenged the quad-core monopoly that Intel was holding on to. And then in 2018, they launched the refresh of these CPUs, which closed the gap in gaming performance between the Intel and AMD CPUs. Use. So whenever you read on the internet there were all these articles about how much market share AMD has been taking back from Intel and if you look on forums where people ask what CPUs to buy there's almost always a bunch of recommendation for Ryzen CPUs and it's not surprising because they are very good value for money. But when you look at the actual market share that AMD has been taking back Yes, they have been taking a couple percent here and there, but if you look at a graph that gives you more of a broad picture over, let's say, the last 10 years, I do want to put a bit of a disclaimer here. I don't know how reliable this actual graph is, but you'll see that there was periods during the actual quad-core monopoly from Intel where AMD had no competition. They had no CPU that genuinely was a proper proposition against the Intel CPUs, but they still had more market share than AMD has now. So it seems as though no matter how much Intel acts like a drunk, weight-gaining Christmas period bear, don't know if that makes any sense, but no matter how crazily they act, they're not losing any significant chunk of market share to AMD, even though they have a very good value proposition in their Ryzen lineup. So with the HEDT series of CPUs, Intel just kind of re-released the same CPUs, but soldered them, and then in the process of soldering them, it kind of made them worse, but like not really. And then with the main mainstream CPUs, it was also a bit weird because they stratified their CPU lineup even more, which means if you're not very in tune with how their product stack works, it's really difficult to know what you're buying because for some reason now like i7 doesn't have hyperthreading. Why is i7 not hyperthreading? I, mean, I, I thought that was the difference between it and i5 and it doesn't really make any sense. And then the i9 is super expensive for what it offers. Yes, the 9900K is the fastest mainstream CPU, but it's very expensive and very hot. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's just weird that like AMD doesn't seem to be gaining as, market, as much market share as everybody seems to think they are. 2018 has been a really weird year for NVIDIA. They started off the year with all of their graphics cards being sold out everywhere. And then um, everybody blamed them because they were apparently in cahoots with other people and cryptocurrency mining and you know stuff meant that everybody was angry at everyone. And then a lot of people on the internet, including me, 
thought that the solution to the GPU drought would be for Nvidia to launch a new series of graphics cards and everybody shouted hungrily for new graphics cards to be launched and Pascal is long in the tooth and we need more power for like whatever and then Nvidia actually releases Turing GPUs and then everybody kind of regrets wanting them to release them because their cost like they cost thousands of dollars and their kind of naming structure is weird and they have a new technology that makes people uncomfortable. Now, like why do they have a mainstream gaming graphics card that costs a thousand two hundred dollars and why did they release the TI version of their highest end graphics card with the rest of the lineup? I mean they've never done that before. Although conspiracy time, I actually think they did that because they didn't want the highest end version of the new graphics card not comfortably outperforming the highest end version of the previous generation because if they didn't release the 2080 ti and the 2080 was the highest end card it would have been really weird because it costs more than the 1080 ti but somehow it doesn't perform significantly better and then with ray tracing it's also like they put everything on the line with ray tracing like they put ray tracing in the name of the new graphics cards and it's completely unproven until like battlefield 5 gets a patch with it and then everybody realizes that it just screws your gpus and you lose like half of your frame rates for reflections that if anything, kind of looks worse. So yeah, Nvidia really kind of forgot how to mar how, how to market gay gouge. Wow, I really screwed that one up. Let me try one more time. Nvidia apparently really forgot how to market gouge with the way they released their new GPUs. And then there's another conspiracy theory around why Turing exists is because they had a huge oversupply of Pascal graphics cards. Nobody was buying them because they were waiting for the new generation of GPUs to come out. And then when Nvidia launched this really weird overpriced architecture, then everybody just went and bought all those Pascal graphics cards. You can't find them in stock anymore. And actually, I think they, they pulled another fast one with the 2080 Ti. I think they only built three of them so that they could go, oh wow, look, they're sold out everywhere. There must be huge demand for the 2080 Ti. Now, not only were graphics cards really expensive and very rare for quite a large portion of the year, but DDR4 was also very expensive. There was a period where nobody really knew what was going on except for the fact that we were paying significantly more money for DDR4 than we were in the same period the year before. And then we started hearing news about like everybody suing big like DDR4 chip manufacturers because they were price setting. But then all of a sudden like RAM just became weirdly cheap actually. Like it's a pretty good time to buy RAM at the moment. But all of these talks about billions of dollars worth of fines and stuff has just kind of disappeared. So I think they got off with a slap on the wrist. Let me know in the comment section below if you've heard anything more about what's actually happening to these companies. If they have to pay for their bad behavior. Naughty Square Hynix, SK Enix. Square Hynix, Square Enix, that's a game manufacturer, <laughs> not manufacturing, that's a game producer, I think. SK Enix, naughty. I'm gonna give an honorable mention to Walmart for making this a very interesting year in PC gaming. Because a couple of months ago, um, they decided that they were gonna release the overpowered series of desktop gaming PCs. And then Steve at uh, Gamers Nexus decided to buy one and see what's what. And we all realized that terrible things were happening there. And then, you know, Bitwood, like Kyle from Bitwood bought one and then Linus Tech Tips bought one. And everybody pretty much just ripped Walmart apart. But, the interesting thing that this kind of scandal in pre-builds brought to attention was just the pre-built market itself. Because people spoke a lot about pre-builds, but kind of like in hushed whispers, and everybody would laugh if you owned one because it was a terrible excuse of PC gaming master raceness. But what this whole thing with the whole Walmart thing showed was that because the kind of like hardcore enthusiasts seem to more or less ignore companies that made pre-built gaming machines, 
they were taking the market for a ride. So then Linus did the whole buying a $1,500 PC from everyone to make sure which one was the best and who was screwing you. And now with that retrospective over, I think it's time to warm up the eggnog, curl up around a fire to ward off the snow, or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere like me, try and stay out of the hell heat outside. Um, but yeah, that's don't really know where I was going with that. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video. Like this video if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one. And until the next one, bye bye.